Hi everybody, this is Shane Armonro, and today we are going to have a little beginner's guide with tips and tricks, that sort of good stuff, for Diablo 2 Resurrected, and we are on the Switch today. So, uh, we'll get started as soon as we get connected to Battle.net, which is a requirement for the game. I'm not going to go over the connection process to Battle.net. It's actually pretty easy. You simply open up your browser, log into Battle.net, and then go to a URL they provide to you and enter a code, and your switch will be linked up. One of the things I'd like to start with is that Diablo 3 and Diablo 2 are two different, very different games, and if you liked one, you may not like the other. So if this is your first foray into Diablo 2 and you didn't play it previously on the PC, then you might be a little confused as to uh, the differences between Diablo 2 and Diablo 3. Let's start off by saying you can have two different characters here. You can have an online character and an offline character, and you can have multiples of these. Uh, I just happen to have two sorceresses here, one offline and one online. The online one I'm playing... Uh, the most, obviously, she's level 15, while my offline character is level 2. So the major difference here is that, of course, online you can play with others, your friends, randos. Offline you cannot. But online is the only character that will actually sync to the cloud. So if you want to play on somebody else's Switch or you want to buy the PC version and continue your cross-progression there, your offline character will not be usable for that. So you'll have to play online, which of course means you're also susceptible to Battle.net going down, losing connections, having micro stutters due to internet connections and all that good stuff. So it's sort of a double-edged sword. If we hop into uh, your uh, options here, there's a few things that you can do to change things around. Uh, I'm, I'm going to leave everything on the default. I'm not going to change anything, but a lot of people may not be aware that these uh, sorts of options exist at all. So I did want to pop in here and show you that there is quite a bit of stuff in here. Okay, so let's go ahead, and I'm going to play with my offline character. That way you're not seeing any um, Act 2 stuff. And um, this is a really good spot that my sorceress is in, so I can show you some of the basics of the game. So the game is broken into acts. Each act takes place in a different land. Each land has different regions, and many regions have uh, buildings or sub-regions, such as underground caves or underground passages. You start off in the Rogue Encampment. This is home base, and regardless of what system you play on, uh, or even um, what version you play on, or, or, or anything, this encampment is always the same. Charcy's always in the same spot. Um, all of the characters that you're going to be speaking with or interacting with, these are all in the same location along with your teleporting pad, and we'll get to that in a minute. So each one of these characters has something interesting to offer you, um, and then you'll also have an exit from your encampment into your first region. So the first thing you have to know is that the regions are all randomized every single time you play. All of the regions are always present, but each region, the map will be randomly generated. So, for example, if you were to um, die and then leave the game, come back later and continue playing, each of the areas that you've mapped through the auto mapper on top will actually be different. So even if you map out every single region in one session, you will lose all of that mapping when you come back to that session later. However, the teleporter pads that you discover in each region, um, these pads will always be active. So even though you lose your mapping in a particular region, and the region itself will change its, uh, its mappings, and even the monsters will regenerate, uh, those pads are always available to you. Okay, so let's let's go around the map here and just show you a couple of the uh, the people you're going to be doing business with. Charcy is your uh, blacksmith, and her goal uh, is to sell you stuff, right? So there's armor, weapons, miscellaneous type stuff that's available. 
and uh, she will also repair your items for you. So over time, your items will uh, degenerate. You can see my durability is 18 of 20 here on my staff. If you long hold the, uh, L, the uh, analog stick, the left stick or L3, they'll offer to repair your items. I would do that periodically. It's not, it's not too um, overburdening, but it is something that when you pop into town, you may want to jump up there. And of course, you can uh, buy and sell items as well. Old Geed over here, this guy is like a, an exotic shop, right? So he'll try to sell you high-priced items that have been unidentified. See how these items are red and they say unidentified? That means they're magical properties, such as my staff here, which is not unidentified. Those magical properties uh, are unknown. So when you're spending 1248 uh, gold, you don't know what sort of special characteristics. Now you see I've got one in my... Uh, I've got... This one's red because I do not have the required strength to wear it. That's different though than the fact that these are unidentified. Even though I'm not able to wear this one, all of its uh, characteristics, which aren't many, are revealed. So I don't do a lot of gambling. That's exactly what that is. You don't know what you're going to get. But he does sell stuff uh, openly as well right so these are all available and they show you all the characteristics so he's just yet another vendor to deal with and sometimes he'll have unusual stuff most of the time um, i find equipment that's better than what i can buy from these guys at least in act one so if we come down here let's move towards the middle of the map here's your private stash so this allows you to store items that you may not be able to use yet. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to uh, drop that over into my stash because it's taking a valuable inventory and I can't use it yet. So what was our, we need to be level uh, strength 12, right? So at some point in time, I may be able to pull that off. In fact, I'm sure I will be. Here's a uh, Kasha, and she will, um, once you do some stuff for her and perform some quests, she will allow you to hire a mercenary to run around with you. So you'll have an AI-controlled partner to play a little co-op with. But not much we can do with her right now. Akara is your, uh, your, magic, uh, your magic user friend, right? She's your magic user hookup. You'll be able to get magical weapons from her uh, at great cost in some cases. I have very little cash right now. But she does sell the things you're going to absolutely need as you're playing the game, especially in the early uh, missions. Namely, um, things like potions and these scrolls. So there are two scrolls that you're going to need to be party to here. One is a scroll of identify, which uh, I'll show you that, of course, in a minute. And then a uh, scroll of town portal. And I have a couple of these now, and I can't really afford to buy any more. There, you can also purchase potions from her as well. Okay. One thing I would like to show you, this is your character inventory screen, and obviously I have practically nothing. I have four uh, potion slots. As you get a new belt, you may be able to get uh, more potion slots, an additional four potion slots, eight potion slots. These are important, and you can actually maintain inventory there. You will see that there's a 1 and a 2 here, so there is a quick switch by clicking in on the right analog stick. You can switch between two different uh, armament setups. So you could have a two-handed staff or sword in one slot and a one-handed weapon with a shield in another, and you can quickly change between these while you're inside the game. So you see right now I'm holding a two-handed staff. If I were to tap that now, I'm in slot 2, which has nothing in it. That's something a lot of people don't realize you can do, and it's very helpful in battle if you need to change up a weapon type, one that does fire damage versus one that does frost damage, etc. Oh, uh, let's see. I think that's it for now. We don't have Deckard Kane yet. He'll appear down here. Once you rescue him, he will identify items for you for free. You can see down in the bottom middle, there's a red box with a cross in it. That means that my character is ready to be upgraded. So... After you do a little bit of killing, you will um, you will get some bonuses here, and we're going to go through that. 
So we already looked at your inventory screen. Uh, one thing that a lot of people may not realize is that there is an auto sort in here. So as you're picking things up, they may get put into this slot. They may get put into this slot. Um, but if you hold down your R3, everything will auto sort for you in a manner that they feel is best to open up slots. Why is that important? Because the items don't just take up a single slot. Um, sorry, my controls are mapped differently on the PC. So notice how this staff takes one by three, right? Where these other ones take one by one. Things like armor, as you saw earlier, may take up six slots. So you do have to do some basic inventory management on your own, in some cases, to keep slots open for something that you really want to carry. Now, this is a standard RPG in the fact that you will indeed be uh, gathering a lot of items that you may never end up using. And, uh, of course, the goal here is to bring them back, sell, identify them, sell them, and then buy new stuff. So it's, it's rut and rinse in the standard RPG uh, variety. So let's jump back in there. And uh, I said I would take a look around up here. So on the first tab is your quest log, which you can see I haven't done a whole lot. Kill all the monsters in the den. So I haven't done, I haven't done any of these quests yet. And some of these quests have multiple subquests, right? So one of these may entail you do two or three different things. So it looks like, oh my God, there's only six quests in Act 1. Get out of here. Uh, you'll, you'll have plenty of, you'll have plenty of uh, activity to do. So here's your character. Now you can see I've got five stat points. I get five stat points every time I level up. And of course, just like a good role-playing game, putting your stats in the right location based on your character class makes a lot of sense. As a sorceress, I'm going to need to have my mana levels up, my health up, dexterity and strength. Really, the strength is all about what can I carry in terms of, of items. So not inventory, but like that... Um, that piece of armor said I had to have a strength of 12 in order to wear it. So let's go ahead. Dang it, I've really got to remap these buttons on the switch. Um, let's go over here and give myself enough strength. So that takes two of my stat points, and the rest is going to go on a counter gift certificate for those of you who get that reference. No, the rest of it will go into vitality. All right, so let's go back to my stash. And uh, it's just a little geezer humor there. So now you'll notice that it is no longer red. So I can hold Y to move it to inventory. And then I can hold A to equip it. All right. So every, every piece of armor makes a difference. Um, so always try to fill all of these slots as much as humanly possible. Um, there's amulets. There's two rings. And there are, uh, there's foot gear, hand gear, uh, and of course a belt. And the belt is, is important to see if you can extend the number of, of quick action slots that are available. Okay. So now I'm not a complete wuss, and um, I think I am ready to actually go in and cause some damage. The teleporters. So, so right now, if you were to look in here, there are these are all of the areas of interest, sort of like a little, almost a teaser, you might even call it a spoiler, that is telling you how many different major areas there are in Act 1. Each one of these regions has a teleporter pad that can take you right back to the rogue encampment or jump you to any of these other regions. Um, so when you get to a new region, find the pad. I mean, make it your priority to find that pad because as you know, if you die uh, or the game resets or you start a new session, you're not going to have that map again. And so you will lose all of the progress in mapping. Beware. At least in the online mode. The offline mode, obviously, you can see is a little bit different. My mapping is being held here. But in the online mode, which is the one you're going to be playing, uh, the map uh, resets. Okay, so for combat, um, obviously, there's a bunch of different ways you can handle it. You can play as a primarily as a melee uh, a weapon ear, as I'm doing here. Now listen, I am not, I'm a sorceress. My job is to use magic to kill beasts. And, and while, yes, I'm doing a pretty good job using, um, using a melee weapon, truth be told, uh, I'm kind of weak 
I don't have a lot of strength. I'm not going to be wearing the greatest armor all the time. Um, so I think uh, I should stick to ranged weapons. Now, if you look in the bottom of the screen, you will see two orbs. One is your health, which is red, mana, which is blue. You have quick action slots, which, by the way, you can use a shift with your ZL button. That allows you to map up to, what, 12 different actions. All right, so right now I've got A, which is, of course, attack, and I've got Y, which is a fireball. Fireballs will sort of self-aim. And it's probably better for a sorceress to stick to ranged weapons whenever possible. But as I'm using that, my mana is depleting. Now, as you may have guessed, the potions that are in that bottom right will allow me to replenish these items, or they will slowly replenish on their own. Items that you carry, armor that you wear, and even your passive stats will help that along. And what I mean by that is if you go over to your skill tree uh, and you go over to fire spells, I don't know why it's there, but there is a warmth. It's a passive skill, which means you don't have to actually call it. It just happens. Increases the rate in which you recover mana. So if I were to be able to activate this, which I have no skill points right now, I would get a 30% faster mana recovery rate. It's worth putting some, some buckage into that, for sure. Some skill points. But you can see it did, re it did regenerate eventually, but when you're in the heat of battle, potions are what you're going to use to make that go up quicker. Scattered throughout the land, you'll find chests, loose rocks, and of course, a plethora of monsters. You'll also find these shrines. Let me go and handle the locals here. Shrines are quick boosts, so this will instantly boost your skills. That'll make you a little bit more powerful. And when you activate that, you'll see a little icon appear above you that will tell you what skill is currently active. You can only have one active at a time, and it is fleeting, so it will not last forever. Die already. All right, so you can see this first area I've already sort of mapped out. Okay. And you can already see that I do have a den here as well. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up that gold. We'll talk about picking stuff up here in just a minute. Let me go crawl in here. You'll also see that I have a stamina bar. By clicking in on L3, you toggle whether you're running or walking. Right now I'm walking, toggle, now I'm running. As you run, you'll burn down stamina. Just like any other game, right? Uh, you'll burn down stamina, and um, you will not be able to uh, uh, run as quickly to get away from monsters. So I tend to keep I keep run on all the time. I've just gotten used to adopting the uh, adopting my play to understanding that I will not necessarily always be running. All right. So here's the den of evil, as you can see, I've already been down here in this offline game, and um, and I just haven't finished it, right? So here's something interesting to look at, which you may not realize. If you hover over this quest, and it says, kill all the monsters in the den. At some point, um, second here, I'm trying to remember how I saw that. And it's telling you what you have to do. You can replay the dialogue. Normally, it'll tell you, like, how many monsters are left. Maybe that was in the PC version, but I definitely think I saw it here. All right. So let's make some short order of these guys. All right, I just went up a level, so we'll get an opportunity to spend some of those skill points. All right, so let's go in. We're, we're safe. By the way, there really isn't any pause. Even though I'm in this menu, the world is going on around me, so you can't just stop. The game is always moving, um, whether you want it to or not. So make sure there's no one around you. Okay, cool. So you can see I've got uh, two uh, areas located here that I need to pay attention to. So let's look at our skill tree. We have one skill choice. And of course, you have a variety of different places you can put it. So I'm going to go ahead and assign to this uh, warmth. I need to start having my mana regenerate faster. Great. Great. You'll also see that there are requirements, right? So I have to be level 12 before I can get a fireball. 
right? I have to be level six before I can get an Inferno. Um, and of course, there are, uh, you know, standard skill tree stuff as well. I mean, there's nothing really new here for skill trees. It's pretty standard. Let's go to character. I'm going to go ahead and assign my first few levels. I'm going to go ahead and make sure my vitality and my energy is up because I'm going to need I'm going to need my mana and I'm going to need my life uh, my life's blood as much as possible. Now that I've killed some characters or some creatures, hmm, it must uh, when you get lower on numbers, I think it, it shows you. We'll find out. There are some creatures, like that shaman back there, who will actually bring dead creatures back to life. You just saw it happen while I'm playing here. So you want to target those enemies quicker. There's a key. Keys help you open locked chests. You'll notice, though, that it doesn't automatically pick it up. You still have to pick it up. And that's almost always the case. There's some, there's some, uh, there's some exceptions, and I'll explain that later if I have the opportunity. Not enough mana. So now I'm now I'm back to either popping one of those mana potions, which I think I will. Pressing up on the D-pad. Okay. Oop, missed one. Alright, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab that healing potion. They're bolts. So those are like cross oh, there's another shaman around here somewhere. There he is. So you probably figured out that there's probably a, a good rhythm you can do where you use magic for a while, then go to melee, magic, melee, magic, melee, especially when you're trying to get rid of these shamans down here. He will keep your life interesting if you don't. Oop, starting to get low on health here. We're going to pop a magic potion. Damn, i got to remap these buttons. <laughs> it's making me mental. Probably making you mental too, watching me do stupid stuff. I have no more mana on tap, so I'm going to have to go back to melee action, clear these guys down. I'm going to have to get that Shaman down, though. Reach out and target him specifically so he stops resurrecting those little beasties. Okay, I've got a little bit of mana here. I'm going to go ahead and just let it charge for now. Imagine if I hadn't put that warmth on, huh? Is there still a Shaman around here? Are these guys coming back? No. Just looks like it. there's just so many of them. Okay, so you can see, let's take a look at the map up. Oh, wait a minute, there's some gold up here. Let me grab that. And a chest. Some chests and barrels that you'll destroy are trapped. So if you're really low on health, I wouldn't open an unknown an unknown barrel or chest. By hitting the, uh, the dash or the minus button, you'll notice that I can turn my HUD on and off, which can be useful if you happen to be in a big firefight. You may not know, though, that if you long press it, you can change... Not only necessarily the location on the screen, but also whether it's bigger or smaller. Sometimes having it bigger is useful if you're in pure exploration mode. Obviously having that over top of you when you're in the middle of a fight is not good. You'll find things like dead rogues that you can search their bodies. Sometimes they'll have stuff, sometimes they won't. And again, I want to point out that the only reason that this map has stayed over from my last session is because I'm playing offline. If I were playing online, my map would not have retained. Let me go take care of Mr. Shaman down here. And his little buddies. Alright, so my goal in the quest was to clear this entire area of bad guys. I'm going to go ahead and get a health potion on board here. All right, we're just going to... There's another key. All right, it looks like I already got it because I was busy hacking away at the A button. Oh, there's a shaman. Where is he? He's down here. Stop bringing these guys back. I worked hard to kill those guys. Low quality armor. Got another shaman? Dang it. All right, out of the way. Move it. Oh, two of them. Uh-oh, this is not good. Too many of them. There we go. There's one shaman down. 
You'll also notice that as you're looking at creatures, you'll see that their names appear in the top. That's currently what creature you're targeting. So if I were to throw a fireball, it's going to zombie undead, it's going towards a fallen, it's going to whomever it is that I'm sort of looking at at the time. You can use that to help you target things like the shaman. Get out of here. Get out of here. Off me. Well, it doesn't help that my buttons are remapped. Okay. I don't want that guy sneaking up on me. So I'm going to pick that guy up. Alright, we're probably in a good spot to take a look at our inventory. As you can see, my inventory is filling up really fast. And so at some point in time, I'm going to have to either uh, run myself back to town or use one of these uh, scroll of town portal. And I'll show you that in a minute because we'll be using it. While you're um, gathering, you can see things. Um, you can hold down the Y and it will compare. I'm sorry, X, and it will compare for you what you're holding versus what you're wearing. So you can quickly and easily see, hey, uh, I could wear that right now. If it's unidentified, of course, you may have some problems. So as you can see, I'm fastly running out of space. I will use my reorg. Now see, in the, in the last organization, I couldn't have held another piece of armor, but now, thanks to reorging, I can. So you'll also see that it started to, to randomly fill in potions as I was using them. Uh, I would go ahead and, uh, first remap your buttons properly. I would go ahead and keep a nice supply of both. Now, when I get a better belt, I'll have another another rack to put these potions in it. I'll probably have that. Oops, I dropped that. Gold picks up automatically. You don't actually have to pick it up. And sometimes potions will pick up automatically if there is an open slot in your belt and you have already chosen what potion to put in that in that slot. That's kind of hard to explain, and I apologize for probably not explaining with it very well. Suffice to say that sometimes potions will pick up by themselves, but most of the time they will not. So just assume that they do not. See, that one picked up by itself. Or either that or my A carried over. That happens too. Oh, hello. I'm going to show you a neat little inventory trick here in just a second. You'll like this. Let me get, where's that shaman at? Oh, hey, 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 none of this. I'm getting trapped in here. I am screwed. I can't get out. I'm going to die. Let me out. Some more potions on board. There we go. Run, 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 run. I'm used to having a level 15 guy. I'm not used to being... <laughs> oh, there's a special creature there. See how his, his uh, name is in yellow? That means he's a little more powerful than the other guys you might be experiencing. You can see he's also wielding magic. Best to, of course, target those guys and get them out of the way sooner than later. Now, they always carry something cool, those guys, too. So we'll take a look at that once I clear this area out a little bit. Javelin. Yeah, of course. Stuff I'm not going to be able to carry or use. All right, I've leveled up again. Sweet. More mana warmth. <laughs> All right, so there's a whole lot of stuff here for me to carry. And another lone guy running around down here. All right, so you can just sit here and, and spam the A button, and it'll pick up everything that it can, uh, whatever it can't, because there's no room in your inventory. It'll just throw back on the ground, like this javelin, for example. Is there anything over here? Buckler. It picked up the buckler. Hmm. It's interesting. Let's take a look at our inventory. There was room for the buckler, but there wasn't room for armor. That's why. There wasn't room for a javelin either. Um, so let me show you a neat little trick. So a lot of people will pick a primary weapon combination, like two-handed or one-handed in a shield. You forget you have these other this other slot over here. You really can, even if you're not going to use it, you can store, essentially, these items in the second slot, giving you enough room to add more stuff without going back to town. So a lot of people don't realize you can do that. And I'm going to go back to my regular configuration. I don't think I can still carry... Oh, I guess I could carry the javelin. I am overburdened. No, not enough room. 
So let me see. Uh, I'm not going to be able to carry anything more here, right? I'm kind of, I'm not going to be able to get a short bow in here. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm full. All right, so let's use this opportunity. Well, first off, let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and warm my mana again here. Oops. Again, I apologize for the bad mapping. All right, I'm going to warm my warm my mana up a little bit more. And I'm going to go ahead and start knocking a couple of points into my strength and dexterity. And you can see that it's upping my attack damage, attack rating, defense, that sort of thing. Pop one more in vitality. It's totally about what your character is and how you play, where you're going to distribute those points. All right, there's too many good items down here. There's more leather armor. There's all sorts of goodies down here I'm going to want to keep. So let's take a trip back to town. I have one town portal scroll, and you only get one use of it. So keep that in mind. The first thing I'm going to do when I get back is to buy another one. So I'm going to long press A, and there's a quick shot back to the rogue encampment. Poof, I do get a return trip. When I say one use, it's round trip, one round trip use. Now, before I forget, I'm going to go and buy another town scroll so that I'm not out if I really need it for an emergency. I've only got 79. Is that enough? Nope. However, I could sell some of this stuff here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and sell that. Ugh. Okay, what's this guy's deal? Defensive 12, fine. Uh, so what did I do? Put it on? What I, I, oh, I dropped it. Silly me. Again, this has to do with the fact that my buttons are mapped incorrectly. Well, differently than on the PC. So actually, right now, um, the one here gives me more defense, even though it's in... Uh, okay, that's fine. I'll wear that. And then I'll sell this one. Now I've got enough to buy my town portal scroll. There. Now I've got one for the next time I might need it. And I could just sell her all of my stuff. But I'm going to run up here. I've just kind of gotten used to selling using um, old Charcy up here. Plus I like to do a quick repair while I'm here as well. 21 gold repair everything. Yes. Now, um, these boots don't have a, they have a $53 value because they're unidentified. Now you might say, listen, I'm not going to use those boots. I know I've got something better, but if you don't identify them, their true value is not revealed. I can sell them for 53 right now, but if I use an identity scroll, now they're worth 214 because all of their powers have been revealed. So don't sell unidentified items. Have them identified or identify them yourself with scrolls and then sell them or decide if you're going to use them or not. Now you can see these boots are far better than what I've got. So let's go ahead and put them on. And I can sell the, um, I can sell these boots. I'm not going to use a club. I'm going to sell that. I'm not going to use a javelin. I'm going to sell that. I'm going to resort my stuff and I'm good. Now I have 210 coin here. I'm going to go back to the wizardress or the uh, enchantress down here. I think I have enough to, to do this and it's worth showing you guys this. Okay, so you see that I have two scrolls of identity and I should be carrying more than that. I should be carrying five to ten town portals just so I can, I know that I've got I've got room to, to grow a little bit. You can buy tomes I don't have enough. These tomes actually will hold those scrolls for you. So instead, so each scroll takes up one slot, one by one. Two scrolls would take up one by two, one by three, and so on. This book is only one by two and can hold, I don't remember how many, like 25 or something. So here's what I'm going to do. It comes with three each, right? It says that it has four identity scrolls with it. I'm going to go ahead and sell a bunch of stuff here just so that we can go through. This isn't my main character, so it's okay. So I'm going to sell enough items to pick one of those up. Okay, so I've got 839. 
Okay, I'm going to go ahead and buy this book. All right, so now I have three scrolls in there. I'm going to move that up here. I'll reorganize my inventory. And I have enough to pick up my four scrolls of identity inside the tome. So if I had had four scrolls sitting outright, it would have taken two by two or one by four. It would have taken up four slots, where now it only takes up two. Getting these books is important. The identity one, eventually you're going to have uh, uh, Deckard to identify stuff for you, so it's not as urgent. But being able to identify while you're out in the field is very important. You may pick up something that can change the turn of a fight or can turn the tides of a fight, rather, um, if you could put it on right now. But if you can't identify it, you don't know what you've got. All right. So now we're in good shape. We're ready to go back and collect more booty. And we can decide whether or not we want to bring the booty back or we want to just try to finish up the, the quest while we're there. Let's finish up the Den of Evil. Right up. Oh, so I can go ahead and pick these other items up now. I've got room. No reason not to. I knew there were some guys up here. Uh-oh. That means there's probably a shaman around here somewhere. Yep, there he is. The more and more you play the game, um, oh, see, it says the quest is updated. Let's take a look at what that says. Just a second. Let me get myself in a safe spot here. Ah, so I have apparently killed enough to rid the den of evil. It says I am now ready. Oh, there we go. Cave is purged of evil. So now I can return home. Now I could use a scroll, but I'm just going to hoof it. It'll give me an opportunity to pick up anything I might have missed as well. There's a health shrine. Might as well use that on the way out. That just tops off your health. There are mana shrines. and There's other types of shrines, as I mentioned. You'll find those as you go. Like I said, sometimes it's kind of nice to backtrack uh, because you'll pick up a lot of stuff that you were missing or that you couldn't carry before or that you may have missed. Look at that. Potions, potions, potions. Everybody loves the potions. Okay. Oh, is that some gold down there? Oh, town portal. You'll also notice that your town portals are automatically put into your tomes now. So the tomes are great. Don't don't leave home without them. Like uh, American Express. Don't leave home without them. Okay. Let's get out of here. You're probably done seeing me walk. This is not a walking simulator. Well, kind of, I guess. More health shrine. Might as well use it, even though I don't really need it. All right. Uh, back to the Blood Moor. And back home. You can't enter these buildings, by the way. I think I've already looted anything that's in here. Oh, no. Nope, there was a chest in here. Cool. Nice. I picked up some more stuff. We'll get back home before I look at it. Come on. My, my uh, stamina is low, so I'm not running. Okay. So who was I supposed to talk to? Was it you? Good day. Nope. Not here. Hello. There we go. Ah, you've cleansed the den of evil. You've earned my trust and may restore my faith. Your reward is trading in the skill of training in the skill of your choice. Now we're talking. So that means we can. Uh, we got a free skill skill point. Yay! All right, so let's go ahead. I'm going to start working on some ice skills. Magic bolt of ice. Ice is great because it slows down your enemies as well as does damage. And you can bind them by pressing Y. And then you can say what button you'd like to put them on. So I'm going to put that on B. All right. So now I've got three different means of attack. And I can't do it in, in town here. I'll just hop on over. I'll nip over and borrow Tom's. All right. So now you see I've got Fireball. And i got an Ice Wedge. And the Ice Wedge... Oh, let's go. There's some guys running around out here. Let's go ice them up. the heck man there's monsters climbing all over you until you actually want one 
So it <laughs> does too much damage. It doesn't even stop them. It doesn't even freeze them. It just kills them outright. If it didn't just outright kill them, it would freeze them first. <laughs> but unfortunately, these guys are such low levels. Maybe there's a shaman maybe down here somewhere. Maybe I can... Well, I don't think that guy will insta-kill. Yeah, he does too. Dang. Well, there you go. I was hoping to find a monster would actually freeze. Oh, here we go. There you go. So now they're slower. They did take a lot of damage. So, again, there's great combinations of freeze, fire, melee, freeze, fire, melee, that sort of thing. I mean, you'll eventually find your groove as to how you like to perform combat. But don't be afraid to combo up, right? Um, so freeze, melee, freeze, melee, that sort of thing. And you'll learn how to juggle your um, mana as well. Okay, so let's uh, let's tidy this up. I don't think I have a whole lot more to show you. I mean, I've showed you all the basics, uh, given you a couple of tricks and tips, got you through the first uh, major quest. And if we go look at our quest, by the way, that one is now cleared. And we don't have another one yet, so we obviously need to talk to somebody. Oh, like her. Rogue scouts have reported an abomination in the monastery graveyard. Yeah, she's, uh, she's pretty rough. All right, so now I have a new quest. Look for the Blood Raven in the burial grounds next to the Cold Plains. So we know where the Cold Plains are. That's where we just were, where the Den of Evil was. And the burial grounds are adjacent to the Cold Plains. So that'll be our next stop. After, of course, we uh, run an identification scroll over this. What about this guy? Is he unidentified too? Yep. Let's identify him. All right, so let's make sure we're not missing anything fun here. Nope. Hmm. Yeah, I'd say this one's better. Let's wear it. Now, the one thing we didn't talk about were um, slots, and I was hoping that playing an earlier character like this, I'd still... Let me see if I've got any in my stash. Nope. All right, let's go talk to Charcy here. I think she will have at least one weapon that is slotted. Come on. It's ridiculous. No slotted weapons at all. How about an armor? Oh, there we go. Okay, so you can see that this says it's socketed. It's got two empty sockets. Over time, you're going to pick up uh, gems. Chipped rubies, chipped emeralds. Each one of those chips can be inserted into a socket, into a weapon, or a piece of armor. And it always uh, imbues it with some sort of magical properties. So resistance to fire, adding fire damage. It depends on the type of item that you add it to, as well as the type of stone that it is. Oh, hey, here we go. Here's some belts. Ah, this looks pretty good. Uh, how much is this guy? 242. Let's see if I've got enough after I sell to show you that what's going on here oh I'm hitting the wrong Ugh, these button mappings are killing me I think I just dropped it oh, I sold that one okay great probably sold the wrong one too nope I got the right one <sighs> okay sell 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 what about you ooh I, I accidentally did there we go Remember, don't forget, we stashed some items in here, too. So we can sell these as well. A little extra weapon slot. All right, and now let's sell that. Okay, now we're talking. Let's see if we can get some belt of light attack. That looks good. Let's get that guy. All right, now that I've got this belt, you'll notice I now have four extra slots. Now, because in the main slot, I have... Uh, health, mana, mana, health. If I were to hold down R3 while well, in one of these empty slots, it'll try to automatically backfill the belt with the same potions that I have denoted in the main slot. That's a great little trick and really help you. It's a lot faster than doing it yourself. It's one of those things I think a lot of people don't know about how to do. All right. So this would be a great place to stop. I've showed you everything other than socketing a weapon, but unfortunately... Uh, I'm pretty sure that if I went over and took care of the next piece, I would get plenty of sockets. 
See, notice that I, one of my, uh, the cold plains is one of my uh, destination locations, right? So, again, find those transporter pads as soon as you can. And uh, I think I might just, this, I might just end it here. I don't think there's anything else I can really teach you that are, that's useful. I mean, the rest of it, it's just going to be a matter of experiencing it on your own. All right. Well, listen, I hope you enjoyed taking a look at this tutorial. Please like the video, subscribe, of course, hit the notification bell. And if there's something about Diablo 2 you're interested in knowing about, let me know in the comments below, and I'd be happy to either answer or even maybe uh, shoot a short video to show you that different aspect of it using a higher level character, perhaps. All right. Again, this is Shane Armonroe, and thanks so much for watching. I do appreciate your viewership. Take care.